This is part one of a lecture on selective and differential media for the week of April 5th, 2020. And selective and differential media are really um, kind of an old school way to identify bacteria based on the media types that they are able to grow on and also their biochemical properties as well as their metabolic properties. And so we were originally going to use both selective and differential media to identify, um, at least start to identify your antibiotic producing candidates in lab. Um, but clinical microbiologists also use selective and differential media to varying degrees to identify the bacteria that are responsible for causing certain diseases. And so selective and differential media are a little bit different from each other. What a selective medium does is inhibit the growth of some microbes, but allow others to grow. Uh, for example, a selective medium might inhibit the growth of gram-positive bacteria, but in, um, allow the growth of gram-negative bacteria. And a differential medium is one that allows different groups of microbes to be visually distinguished from each other. And this might be by being able to distinguish the way a colony looks on differential media plates, but also um, how the surrounding media looks. And differential media usually use biochemical differences between the two groups to allow you to visually differentiate What's important to remember is that a medium can be selective, it can be differential, or a medium can be both selective and differential. And so I'm going to start by talking about a medium that is just selective but not differential, known as PEA or phenyl ethyl alcohol auger. And PEA is selective against gram negative bacteria, and the mechanism by which this works is the phenyl ethyl alcohol that's incorporated into this plate that you can see over here um, inhibits DNA synthesis. And gram-positive bacteria have that very thick peptidoglycan cell wall that phenyl ethyl alcohol can't penetrate. Whereas gram-negatives have the thin peptidoglycan layer and this alcohol has no trouble passing through and getting to the inside of the cell. So gram-negative bacteria um, phenyl ethyl alcohol will inhibit their DNA synthesis and they won't be able to grow as you see on the right hand side here with serratia marchesans, whereas a gram positive bacteria will grow easily on PEA. Um, as you can see with the staph aureus growing on the left of the plate. And so other types of media such as blood auger are not selective, but they are differential. So blood auger is what's considered an enriched media. Um, it's very favorable for growth of a lot of different microorganisms. It doesn't have any selective agents in it. But what blood auger is good for is differentiating between different types of bacteria. Specifically, um, the types of hemolysins that are produced by bacteria. And what a hemolysin is, is an exoenzyme or a secreted enzyme that can lyse or um, kill red blood cells and degrade the hemoglobin inside. And so um, blood auger is made by adding red blood cells to a normal medium like TSA or LB. And those red blood cells can be degraded by hemolysins. And what the resulting kind of degradation looks like can help you distinguish what types of hemolysins those bacteria have. And so what that really looks like in terms of results is can be seen in this image on the bottom here. And so there are several different types of hemolysis or hemolysis. The first I'm going to talk about is beta hemolysis, which you can see here around this B or beta. And beta hemolysis is the total breakdown of red blood cells and the hemoglobin inside them. And what that results in for this bacterium specifically is just a clearing all around of those red blood cells and kind of a yellowish tint to the plate itself. Some bacteria can um, secrete alpha hemolysin and do alpha hemolysis, which is a partial breakdown of the red blood cells in the media and the hemoglobin as well, which can result in a little bit of clearing as you can see around the outside of those bacterial lawn, as well as a green or brownish tint to the plate. Finally, some bacteria um, are unable to break down red blood cells or hemoglobin, 
And while they can grow on blood augers, you can see here, there's no clearing around them. And that's what's known as gamma hemolysis. And so by looking at a blood auger plate, you can um, deduce the hemolytic activity of a particular bacterium. <laughs> and then one additional type of media that is not selective but is differential is triple sugar iron auger, or TSI auger. And TSI auger can differentiate between bacteria um, in several different ways. The first thing that it can differentiate is what type of sugar fermenter that bacterium is. And by using um, three different sugars, glucose, lactose, and sucrose in this media, as well as a phenol red pH indicator, um, TSI can distinguish between um, fermenters of glucose, fermenters of lactose and sucrose, and non-fermenters. And so TSIs are normally conducted in what's called a slant. And so this is a test tube that's been filled with TSI auger. And then before that auger solidifies, the test tube is tilted to produce kind of this uh, diagonal slant here. And there are two parts to a slant. So this part above um, the dotted line is the actual slant. The part underneath on the bottom is the butt. And this slant is typically thought of as an aerobic environment because this media has access to the oxygen within the test tube, whereas the butt is more of an anaerobic environment because it doesn't have access to any of that oxygen. And so the pH indicator, phenol red, is what gives TSI this specific color. And what a pH indicator does is it changes colors based on the pH of the media. And so when phenol red um, is exposed to a lower acidic pH, it turns yellow. When it's exposed to a high or alkaline or basic pH, it turns more red, kind of like a deeper pink, rather than this rusty color. And so you inoculate a TSI slant in this way you can see here, this bacteria growing on the slant. And then you allow it to grow and you look for color changes. And that will allow you to sort of start uh, differentiating between the fermentation status of different bacteria. And so a non-fermenter, a bacteria that can't ferment any of these three sugars, will have an appearance like this on a TSI slant, where the whole entire slant of top and butt is red. And the way that these are read and reported out are using the letters K and A, K for alkaline, which would be really dark red, and A for acidic or yellow. And so a red slant and a red butt would be red red or KK. And this would indicate that this bacteria can't ferment glucose and it also can't ferment lactose or sucrose. <laughs> in some cases, you'll see a color change in the butt portion or the bottom to yellow and the top part or the slant will still remain red. This would be reported out as a Ka bacterium and this indicates glucose fermentation. And so in the anaerobic environment, a bacteria that's Ka will be able to turn glucose into lactic acid. The lactic acid will turn this media yellow, um, but as soon as it runs out of glucose, it loses its ability to uh, ferment anything if it can't ferment lactose or sucrose and you'll see this basic color in the slant and so the slant will remain red whereas the bottom will turn yellow and that would indicate your bacteria right, can ferment glucose but not the other two sugars and if your bacteria can ferment everything you would see yellow color both in the slant and the butt and this would be reported out as AA or acidic acidic um, and that would indicate that not only can your bacteria ferment glucose into lactic acid and turn the bottom of the media yellow. It can also change its sugar source and ferment that as well, and it can ferment lactose and or sucrose and turn this land yellow. <laughs> and TSI is interesting because it can also um, provide some other information about the biochemical properties of particular bacteria and differentiate between bacteria that can produce hydrogen sulfide or H2S and ones that can't. And there are several compounds within the triple sugar iron auger 
specifically sodium thiosulfate and ferric citrate, that when combined with hydrogen sulfide will form this black precipitate here. And so uh, TSI can also differentiate between an H2S positive uh, bacterium, what that can make hydrogen sulfide, as you can see here, um, and an H2S negative, which would not have the black precipitate present. And finally, um, TSI can also differentiate based on gas production. And so gas positive organisms sometimes will actually um, produce oxygen or CO2 gas that can crack through the augers, you can see up here, or enough oxygen or CO2 to actually move the entire slant up the tube and create this bubble at the bottom of the tube. And in this way, TSI can differentiate between gas producers, which you can see in the image here, and uh, bacteria that don't produce gas. And so when you're reporting a TSI slant, you have to take into account the Ka status, right? So whether your slant and butt are red or yellow, as well as the ability to make hydrogen sulfide and the ability to make gas when you report out your TSI slant results.